Alrighty, so in this video, we're gonna talk about estimating the almost ideal demand system in R. Now, uh, I know there were a number of requests uh, to go and do this in Stata, but you know, I'm not that much of a Stata guy, and you know, I don't really have access to that proprietary software. But uh, I will go and link, you know, some access to the, you know, resources in the description below. I know that's not very helpful for all you Stata users out there, but here we're using R. So we're going to be using this package called MIC Econ Aids, right? That's a package that is going to be used in R, and we're also going to be using the same data set that we were using uh, from before. This is our uh, on Statistics Canada data for Ontario. And um, one silly thing that I didn't notice, right, because what I was doing was constructing these artificial budgets here is that we actually have uh, a full budget over here of housing, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels. And lo and behold, we have data on housing for maintenance and servicing of housing, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels. Now that, you know, that's our whole budget that we go and we have there. But, you know, um, I didn't really go and include, uh, you know, each and every single one of these terms there. And um, it's not going to really, you know, make so much of a difference as long as your budget's really defined or really your uh, expenditure vector is really defined and your budget shares are also well defined. So, um, step number one is that, you know, this is expenditure data and we need to get prices. So this is a way that I go and hack prices out of expenditure data, right? It's kind of uh, a little bit like cheating um, a little bit because, and it's, you know, relying on um, a lot of assumptions. So, you know, this isn't something that you're going to see, uh, you know, published anywhere. Uh, you know, this is just something that I use for going and hacking out uh, price data out of this uh, expenditure data. Uh, it's just a little trick that I figured out. So step number one is that we're going to regress all of our expenditure terms on time. That's what we're going to first do. So for electricity, we're going to do, you know, a simple, you know, this isn't even, uh, you know, an undergraduate sort of regression. This is a ignorant of undergraduate terms sort of regression because there's no control for heteroscedasticity here, right? I'm just going and running regressions because I just want unbiased coefficients. And with those unbiased coefficients, I can get some fitted values. So electricity on time and same thing with gas expenditure on time with water supply and sanitation services on time, uh, materials for maintenance and repair of dwelling on time and for service and maintenance of repair of dwelling on time. I don't know, really know the difference between those twos, but I don't really care. Um, step number two is that using these fitted values from these regressions, each one of these guys, right? I'm going to take the difference between the logged true values and the logged fitted values. Now you could just, you know, be smart and just, you know, plug in and say, I want the residuals of this uh, vector here. I want the residuals um, from these values. Um, but this is how I did it. It doesn't really make so much of a difference. You would use the code uh, resid uh, to go and get that over there. And once we have our logged prices, right? Once we have our logged prices, right? We're going to stick them into a data frame, right? I'm calling it an array here, but you know, I'm just calling it a, uh, it's really just a data frame. And then we're going to have a vector of the names of our prices. So this is what they're actually called. Um, if we were to go and let's first, you know, run this all the way through. We were to go and actually look at those names, right? You go and you get these sort of things, even though there's operations being put in over there. Because um, I guess once it's stored in a data frame, you know, there's going to be no real brackets in there, and they just put any symbol uh, that you don't really know about or like spaces really uh, with a period in there. Um, next is that most importantly, we're going to have to get our budget share data. And that's just taken by, you know, taking your expenditure on that particular unit all over your total budget. So 
um, your budget shares should go in some to, some to one. Um, here, I'm just you know kind of using a partial, you know, not telling the full story, but you know, I'm still getting accurate budget shares there. So this for the budget share for electricity, it's just going to be the expenditure for electricity all over the total expenditure on housing, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels. And then we're going to go and uh, get our array of budget shares and you know save those names right and once we have our information on shares and prices we're going to stick them together into a new data frame right i'm calling it df1 right this is called data frame number one um, once we have that all together right we can now actually estimate our almost ideal demand system and you know it's a it's a pretty powerful demand system, and you know it's it's very humbling to, to go and see that you know after you you know work really hard to go and understand this, right? That you see only one line of code uh, to go and actually run this monster, right? Because all we've done before was just going and prepping our data. That's what we were going and doing. So we just have the vector of the prices that we're going to go and use the names of our prices the names of the budget shares that we're going to be going and considering and the housing water electricity gas and other fuels right and that's our you know total budget so your prices your shares and your what's called your budget and of course you know we're going to have to go and put in our data frame and the method that we're going to be using here is for uh linearly approximated almost ideal demand system and our price index is going to be uh, the stone price index. So let's go, let's, let me just go and clear this real quick. So you can just go and see this in action. And boom, that's the, that's the almost ideal demand system for you, right? And with each one of these budget shares and each one of these uh, elasticities that you go and you have there on the side, each one of these coefficients. And that's a, uh, that's pretty cool that what we got here. Um, what what else we can do is that we can go and you know use Richard Blundell's and Robin's uh, estimation method. I changed this over here to IL for iteratively squares, and we can go and use uh, the translog price index, right? Um, I think there's like a more a better name for it, right? But I I just call it the translog price index, and boom. And there we go, using iterative least squares, right? And uh, that over there, I think, you know, this, these constant terms, right? This alpha naught, right? That's which, which is in your almost ideal demand system is zero. Um, that really doesn't have, you know, much bearing on what your budget shares are going to be. I wonder what it would be if, you know, you used linear approximate. Let's go see that again. Yeah, so I, it doesn't seem to, you know, uh, really quite come up. Oh yeah, because, oh, because the reason why there's no alpha naught in there is because in your linear approximate almost ideal demand system, you're going and really estimating a demand system just in terms of its budget shares. Uh, and, you know, it's also defined in terms of, uh, you know, using the stone price index, but, you know, here we're going and we're using, uh, we're using this translog price index, but you know, apparently not. That's that's my understanding. There is wrong. It's just going and being defined in terms of its budget shares there. So um, this is the video on estimating the almost ideal demand system in R. Again, I'm sorry to all you Stata people out there. Um, I will see what I can do for Stata uh, in terms of figuring that out. Take care.